when the solution is done, we have two graphs, showing the variations of the drag coefficient and the residuals with iterations. The residual graph has three curves. They show how well the solution satisfies the discretized conservation equations, that is mass, x momentum, and y momentum. The iteration stopped when all three residuals fall below the default tolerance value of 10 to the minus 3. Drag coefficient values start high, and converge to a lower value, which is hard to see. Unfortunately it is not possible to zoom into this graph. But we can read the converged drag coefficient value in the console tab, as 21.4. This value needs to be compared with the value of 20 that we obtained earlier from Munson's book. The difference is about 7%. Let's start post-processing by plotting the pressure contours. Double-click contours under results and graphics. By default, static pressure contours are plotted. Static pressure is the variable P in the momentum equations. Pressure varies very little away from the cylinder. Zoom in to see its variation close to the origin. Pressure values are all with respect to the zero gauge pressure, defined at the outlet. Positive values shown in red color indicate that the pressure there, is higher than that at the outlet. Blue color shows negative gauge pressure. Unlike the potential flow theory, Pressure is not symmetric at the front and back of the cylinder. Higher pressure at the front and lower pressure at the back causes pressure drag. Let's now plot the velocity magnitude contours. Double click contours. Change the contour variable to velocity. Variation of velocity magnitude away from the cylinder is more visible compared to the pressure. Wake effect at the back of the cylinder extends all the way to the exit. As the flow passes over the object, it speeds up to 6.7 mm per second, which is about 10% higher than the inlet speed. Velocity on the cylinder is zero due to the no-slip condition. And there is a low-speed blue zone in its close vicinity. Let's plot the path lines, which are also streamlines for this steady flow. Double click path lines. Select inlet as the surface to release the path lines. To show all the lines in one color, change the color variable to density, which is constant in this flow. To show the cylinder and the outer box, Check mesh and display the necessary entities. The streamlines are very smooth. The cylinder seems to be disturbing the approaching uniform flow very little. It is also possible to animate the path lines, to feel the flow field better. Use the pulse button for this. Deceleration of the fluid particles that are close to the cylinder is clearly visible. To see the path lines close to the cylinder better, let's create points just above the cylinder, and release path lines from them. In the menu, press create and point. Create five points with the shown coordinates. They are just above the shoulder of the cylinder. Double click path lines one. Deselect inlet from the surface list and select the newly created 5 points. Zoom in to see the generated path lines. 
as you see, there is almost no separation. Increase the step size a bit, and animate the path lines with the pulse button. Deceleration of the fluid particles close to the cylinder is clearly visible. Let's have a look at the velocity field using the velocity vectors. Double click vectors. Make the necessary adjustments. And show the vectors. The default vector style and size seem to be inappropriate. Make proper modifications and replot. Zoom in, to see how the velocity field changes close to the surface. Have a look at the details at the front stagnation point. Increase the vector size for a better view. Also check the rear stagnation point. As mentioned earlier, there is no separation at all, and the flow field looks similar to that predicted by the potential theory, although this is a real viscous flow. How does the pressure vary at the surface of the cylinder? Is there adverse pressure gradient? Now close your eyes and try to visualize an 0.1 micron diameter cough droplet, moving in air at a speed of 20 meters per second. The air flow around it is not that different than this one, which for me, is quite amazing and hard to believe. The actual droplet probably is not a perfect sphere, and it wobbles, and change shape as it moves. It may also interact with thousands of other droplets around it. Let's see how the boundary layer develops above the cylinder. First, we will generate a line that goes from the top shoulder point of the cylinder to the outer box. Select Create Line. Enter the endpoint coordinates of the line as shown. and name it as vertical line. Under plots, double click XY plot. Uncheck position on X axis option. Set the Y axis variable as the Y coordinate. Set the x-axis variable as the x-velocity. Select the newly created vertical line and plot. This is the velocity profile above the cylinder. It is zero on the surface of the cylinder, and increases to 6.5 mm per second at about 20 mm. This looks like the variation inside a boundary layer, but it is not really proper to call this a boundary layer. Boundary layers are thin layers observed at high Reynolds numbers. For this creeping flow, viscous effects are seen everywhere, and it is not possible to divide the flow field into a viscous boundary layer and an inviscid outer layer. As seen in this plot, even at the outer box which is very far away from the cylinder, the velocity is not equal to the free stream velocity of 6 mm per second. It means the viscous effects, and in general the existence of the cylinder, can be felt even at a distance, 40 times the diameter of the cylinder. This is because of the very low Reynolds number. If we had used a larger outer box, we expect this velocity profile to converge to the free stream speed eventually. So it is quite puzzling that the streamlines of this creeping flow look very similar to that of the inviscid potential flow, although in creeping flows the whole flow field is viscous. Just pause for a second, listen to this last sentence again and think about it. Finally, 
let's check how much of the drag force is due to pressure and how much is due to shear. Under reports, double click forces. Make sure that only cylinder is selected and the direction of the force is the X direction. Press print to see the results on the console tab. Pressure and viscous components of the drag force are almost identical. Each is about 0.2 micronewtons. Although the drag coefficient is large, drag force is very small because both the reference area and the reference speed are very very low. For the spherical droplet, the forces would be even lower, because the frontal reference area would have the square of the diameter, whereas for the cylinder we took the length in the Z direction to be unity. I think this is a good point to finish this tutorial. There are several things you can do at this point. You can perform extra post-processing. For example plot the variation of pressure over the cylinder, and see how similar it is to the ones in this figure, taken from Munson's book. You can get quite puzzled by the result. Increase the Reynolds number to about 10, and simulate a case, with flow separation and circulation in the wake. You can increase the Reynolds number to about 100, to simulate an unsteady flow with Karman vortices. You can change the object to a streamlined one, and compare the drag coefficient of it, with that of the cylinder. You can perform a 3D creeping flow simulation with the object being a sphere, such as the cough droplet. Be curious and be creative. Please let me know if you like this tutorial and want to see more of it. Please send me an email if you notice any mistakes or you got stuck at some point.